Congratulations, Emma, on your appointment. Thank you very much. Tell us why you wanted the job. Well, GSK makes a difference to millions of people's lives, improving and protecting their health, whether it's with everyday pain relief or antibiotics or vaccinations or our more advanced science in HIV and respiratory. And this is really important work. So I love this company and I believe in its values and I just feel incredibly privileged to have the chance to lead us through our next chapter alongside the rest of the CET. What do you think is special about GSK? Undoubtedly, our greatest assets at GSK are our differentiated medicines and our much-loved brands that are chosen by millions of people all around the world every day. But at the top of our list of assets has got to be our people an extraordinary workforce with, who are incredibly dedicated to the purpose of this company, helping more people do more, feel better and live longer. A workforce that have created a really strong culture that is extremely open to challenge and to change and highly collaborative. And I think these are really important things for us to take forward into our next chapter. Why did you go into business as a career? And what's motivated you as you've risen up the ranks? Well, it's a very good question because I have no family background in, in business. My dad was in the Navy and my grandparents were academics, doctors and, and farmers. Um, but I think it was curiosity that got me in, first of all. Um, I started in consultancy and then wanted to do uh, the work myself. I have a bit of a bias uh, for, for action, um, too. Uh, and then I just loved it. You know, I had this chance to work in businesses that I thought were doing important things and have these incredible professional adventures all around the world, uh, learning from uh, outside the businesses, but also colleagues along the way. And I'm also extremely competitive. So, you know, I, uh, when I got into winning in the businesses that I was in, I wanted to keep, keep going. And, and I was very lucky in my early to career to be heavily sponsored by leaderships to sort of keep keep progressing. I was supported through four maternity leaves, which also made a big difference. And, and I think, you know, that's also taught me to remember to keep sponsoring young talent along the way. Who have you learned from in your career? Who's inspired you along the way? You know, I'm actually somebody who's very driven by learning full stop. And obviously I'm about to go through a phase where that's going to be accelerated exponentially over the next uh, few months. And I, I'm very hungry to learn from the people around me in various ways. I've learned from some extraordinary CEOs, including Andrew, of course. Um, but I've also learned from many of my peers, the different cultures that I've worked in. And I'm often particularly inspired by people in either my teams or elsewhere in the organisation. I remember sitting in a CET at the moment when the good results had come through on the um, malaria vaccine. And I, I was completely stopped in my tracks with admiration for a team of people who'd been working on this for 30 years with such resilience and courage to keep fighting through to get something that was going to have such an incredible impact on the world. And uh, that was a moment of great inspiration. But likewise, this weekend, I was feeling pretty inspired by my team who'd been in our Maidenhead factory that was completely flooded. And they were in there at 4 a.m. to try and get all of the continuity programs in place so we could keep delivering our products on time. And, you know, I, I'm constantly inspired by people in our organisation that are doing great things like that every single day. I also, like many of us, take inspiration from the outside world. I love to see courageous leaders with strong points of view. Uh, you know, you can't help but be impressed by seeing what Jack Ma has done with Alibaba, or I'm a great admirer of Sheryl Sandberg, um, the CEO of, of Facebook and the position she's taken uh, on things. And I'm a, I'm a big fan and I use her as a constant reminder of the uh, Financial Times writer Lucy Kellaway. Just because she puts a prick in the pomposity of big business language and I am, uh, you know, quite allergic to that and excessive PowerPoints and, you know, I think she's a good inspiration to keep me going every day too. What have been some of the formative experiences in your career? 
Well, I've obviously been lucky enough to have an incredibly diverse career over the years, uh, working in all sorts of different roles, different companies, but most importantly, different geographies, whether it's in Europe or the US or Asia. And I think it would be true to say that probably the most formative experience was leading a business in China um, at a, a time of exponential growth, uh, a, a, a time when we needed to build capabilities at, at pace. The market was really uh, opening up, and I developed a tremendous love for China and broader Asia and saw all the opportunity that, that was there. And it was also a very humbling experience for me personally to recognize all that I had to learn. And it's given me a great appetite to keep investing and learning about this part of the world. I'm very excited about what we can do with GSK there, not least uh, I just recently saw our new office in Singapore, which is going to be opening up uh, our hub for that part of the world. And I know it's opening in a few months. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be a critical part to our strategy going forwards. What have been some of the biggest business challenges you faced? Obviously we work in very challenging times as I've already alluded to and frankly the more senior you get you tend to see some challenges every day because people that's what they're bringing you uh, not always just days full of good news. Um, but if I think about the really serious or the biggest challenges I've ever faced They've always been related to crises related to quality, safety, or potential breaches of compliance. Now, fortunately, they don't happen too often, but when they do, they can be very expensive. And I don't mean uh, in terms of financials, although obviously they can have consequences. They're particularly expensive in terms of reputation. And it's very important in the healthcare sector that we do not ever lose sight of the contract of trust that we have with patients, consumers, or the healthcare professionals that recommend us. If we are vaccinating healthy children, or giving Panadol to a newborn baby, or making sure that our, our medicines are actually reaching people who are suffering and depend on them every single day, we absolutely have to stay guardians of that contract of trust. And, and when it's broken, um, in some ways it's not that difficult to make the call of closing down a factory because we have to put the patient first, but it can be a difficult, very difficult uh, time to navigate. And that's why at GSK, when you sign up to this company, you sign up wherever you are in the world and in whatever role you're in to sharing the ownership um, to making sure we keep that trust going. How would you characterise your leadership style? What can people expect? Well, actually, I'm not very complicated. I love working for a company whose purpose I believe in, but I'm very focused on the performance. So I really uh, work hard to align with the team that uh, I have around me on what our objectives and goals are and making sure that we're tracking delivery against that uh, regularly. Um, but I fundamentally believe that you can never achieve competitive performance without great people. And the more senior I've got in my career and the longer things have gone on, I've realised how much... Uh, that matters uh, to me, to work with incredibly talented people from diverse backgrounds uh, who share those goals and objectives and where we can achieve the unthinkable. What excites you about the future of GSK and what are some of the challenges? Well, the healthcare sector is obviously facing a lot of challenges. Uh, pricing is a key area of, of focus. Government and household budgets are under pressure. The regulatory environment is extremely uh, tough and unpredictable. And of course, society wants big business and, and big pharma to continue to close the trust deficit that has been widening up. But nonetheless, I see huge opportunities for growth for GSK. 
Fundamentally, this is a growth sector with demographics on our side, whether it's the ageing consumer, new cohorts of people coming out of, of poverty, a consumer and a patient who is much more digitally informed and, and self-aware. And we're also at a time of unprecedented scientific and technological change and further advances. So it's really important we keep pace with that at a time where collaboration is, is the name of the game and we need to make sure we're working with external partners, be it in academics, academia or also um, uh, other third parties, just as we have done so excitingly with Verily around our bioelectronics bio deal, or perhaps with NGOs. I'm incredibly excited about the work that we do with Save the Children, where we really bring our complementary uh, capabilities to bear. And then, of course, what we should be most excited about is our own brands and assets and medicines, differentiated medicines that we have in our portfolio. We have a fantastic uh, group of medicines we've recently uh, launched, which I think will continue to accelerate, um, as well as some exciting ones that look like, look like they're coming up in the pipeline. What excites you about the science in GSK? I'm incredibly excited about the science at GSK. Obviously, R&D is absolutely the beating heart of our company, and our success is and will continue to be defined most fundamentally by the strength of our pipeline. And the wonderful thing is, we've got some tremendous assets that have just recently been launched right now, which is why we've given such a competitive ratio of delivery in the last few quarters around some of our recent uh, launches. Um, but just as exciting as what's about to come up, whether it's the Shingrits vaccine or the closed triple or the new assets in HIV. And I think we're going to go through a fantastic period of accelerated growth uh, behind these. And then, of course, what's going to come beyond that in terms of the early stage pipeline that we just had presented at the end of last year. So a number one priority of focus for me over the coming months and years is going to be really making sure we're investing appropriately and strongly in our R&D organisation and in the chance to maximise the assets that we have in-house and those that we can bring in to complement them from the outside. You've been leading GSK's consumer healthcare business for several years. How has that business changed over time? Well, we've, we've changed consumer healthcare a lot. I mean, I first took it over in 2012. Uh, and I think we needed to change. At the beginning, uh, the focus was really very much on making some portfolio choices and deciding which categories were appropriate for a healthcare company to be in and where we could really win. So that included some divestments. And then we made some big moves in operating model, particularly putting in place the global category structure and integrating the supply chain far more effectively to make sure that commercial and supply were working as one organization. But of course, the big move came with uh, the Novartis deal, which has been transformational for consumer healthcare. And I am so delighted with the performance of the company and incredibly proud uh, of the 23,000 people that have been working on that integration and being able to deliver at really competitive uh, pace uh, beyond the synergies we'd originally uh, targeted and still performing in terms of top line growth and transformation of profitability uh, uh, really, really competitively. Uh, they've done a, a great job. And we were able to bring in some fantastic new talent, both from Novartis and from the outside. We put much more focus and discipline in terms of our capital allocation behind uh, power brands, and it's really paying off. But, you know, the best in consumer is very much still to come. You will be the first woman to lead a company the size of GSK in the UK. How important is that for business and for you personally? I've never primarily defined myself by my gender. As I, I don't think of myself as a woman in business. I think of myself as a business person. Um, and I've been lucky enough to always work for companies or in countries where being female hasn't limited or restricted me. But you know, obviously I know that's not the case for everyone, it's not the case everywhere, and the statistics show we've still got a lot of progress to make. So I very much take my responsibility seriously alongside other female leaders, be it in business or in politics, and how wonderful that we've made so much progress there recently, but, or also in academia. You know, we all have a responsibility to be role models, to inspire our daughters to stay ambitious, uh, uh, to aim high and to dream big. You have several months of transition ahead of you. 
What are you going to be doing in that time? Well, I'm very grateful to the board and to Andrew for giving me this time uh, to make sure that Andrew and I maximise the opportunity of the months that we have together and organise a very well-planned transition. And I really want to also use it as an opportunity to step back, to travel around the company, to meet as many people uh, as possible and to listen and hear what the leaders in GSK around the world uh, think are our greatest assets to keep accelerating and what may need to evolve as we head into our next chapter. I'm really looking forward to it.